So this is Bill here at PowerStrokeHelp.com and Mike Hanna. Hey. Mikey. Um, we're doing another installment of What's That Noise? But except this time, it didn't really make a noise. It's more like, what the hell is that? So we got a customer that brought a truck in that's getting lifetime dealer proof and he said that he just changed the oil cooler, right? That's right. Okay, when we pulled the upper coolant hose off, uh, there was a bit of a surprise uh, that we had here. Um, as you can see, here we flashlight, Mike. As you can see, inside here there's like seed pods, almost like, you know, did this guy do his own oil cooler, Mike? I don't, I, I don't know that far yet. I'm, I'm wondering if he did his own oil cooler and somehow squirrel decided to take up residence or something inside the inside there. But look, look, look at the, look at this. What the hell is that all about? I mean, this is, these are seeds from a tree. And they're, they're all over. And this, <laughs> this is why do-it-yourselfer guys need a professional mechanic. I mean, these seeds are all over the floor. It's like some kind of seed pot. Are they, are they all over the top of the truck or something? I mean, is it like a local tree? <laughs> well, something was growing. <laughs> so uh, he said he did the oil cooler. So once we get this apart, we'll be able to see what's going on inside there. I'm, I'm very, very interested to see what goes on in there. And I mean, this is the crazy stuff that comes into my shop. You know, we, 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 we hang out out here and we say we're these power stroke gurus. And they come in here and, it's, and they've had all these people look at it. But how the hell could you miss that? Help me fill in the gaps here, Mike. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling this is like very, very, very odd. You didn't change the coolant when he... What's inside the radiator look like? It's got a little bit in it, too. Like a baby squirrel took up home in there, Mikey. Something did. And then baby squirrels... I mean, it, was get, it was ready for the winter. <laughs> See, that's just it. People take apart their stuff at their house and they leave it open. And ain't no telling what goes on. I'm interested to see if this guy uh, did this himself. Or this is one of those little jack leg tree, tree mechanic kind of guys. My cousin Stymie helped me do the work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It took him a month with the hoses open. We're going to find out. We're going to find out what we're going to Yeah, ask a question. This on here and stack both washers of this banjo bowl on, on the, the one side. side. That on the inside and the outside. Correct. How the hell did that thing not leak? Well, that's well. Luckily, I guess this is aluminum, and it, it, it crushed just enough to stay sealed off. But it was still it was sealing from the inside of the the fuel line there. Mm -hmm. Show me this. Uh, so anyway. Show me this turbo downpipe too. So you said that he had a boost leak. He said he had a cat leak. Okay. His, his concerns, and I immediately heard, you know, the leak hissing. But you know, after a while of doing this, you, you kind of get the. You know what an exhaust leak sounds like versus a a a, a, a compressor boost leak. Right, right. So on the so, this is an so on the turbine leak. side, this is on the exhaust turbine side, not the compressor boost side. Right. So on the back here, what they put put a BD uh, uh, Y pipe in this, which is a nice system. I mean, this yeah, is as nice a system as you can find. I mean, what was the problem? Where was it leaking? He, the, this clamp that no one seems to be able to get on there, right? They're a pain in the ass. I mean, they are. Because you got to take, you got to, you got to make sure you leave the ones down here loose until you get that one on the back of the turbo. That's one of the hardest things to do is to get that one back on. You got to leave the ones down here loose, and while it's flopsy mopsy, get this one good and tight. And this thing has to sit down in there. Right, a, that's this what groove has to sit down inside the. The, where it mates up against the turbo, and if you don't do that and just clamp it, that thing's going to leak. Yep. And you know, and what was he, he was complaining about loss of boost, that was, right? That was loss of power. Mm -hmm. And uh, and of course, this stuff is spewed all over the engine. And yeah, so you got to the back side of the the transmission and all that. It's nice and black. Yeah, that's nice and nice and dirty. With ash. That's why we have a uh, hot water pressure washer and a dishwasher for this stuff. Look at that. Wonder if he did that. If that's one of ours. That, that um, cooler? Mm. That's, that's, well. that's, Just so you know, I signed my name on the back of every one of these. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you no, know, I don't. <laughs> I ought to, though. I ought to put my name, stamp, you know, stamp Power Stroke, you know, or PSH or something. I need to put his name. Chris's name is one that needs to be on it because he's the one that does the, the heavy lifting around here. There's some jerk, jerk on the internet that talks about how good we are. <laughs> All right, Mikey. 
All right, so these guys, I turn around. I mean, these guys are fast here. They've already got the motor back together. You know, a day later, I, I come back and I want to find out about the berries and the oil cooler and how they got the damn thing running. So what do you got here, Mikey? What did we find? Well, there was a few of those little berries in the oil cooler. A few berries in the cooler. So glad we went on and replaced that. So you said that Scott had spoke to the customer? And what was his response about the berries? I guess Scott sent him some pictures and... Well, I, I guess he cussed the rats, but... Did the, did the customer have any, any conclusion through Scott, you know, why the, why the berries were in his cooling system? Not 100%. Well, okay. So, the moral of the story is, is don't take your truck apart and leave don't, it in the damn leave, barn? Don't leave things open for other critters to make home. Yeah. So there wasn't a whole lot of it in the radiator, was there? No, no, it was mostly piled up in the upper hose, which is strange because that's that's an outlet. So I don't know why it would be there. Only thing I could think is the stuff was floating. So when we drained the coolant, it made its way down the hose because mm -hmm. it flowed back through the engine. So did that truck get towed in or driven in? Do you remember? We got towed here. Okay. So they started on this thing, got a little, they got into it, and then while they were trying to figure out what the hell they were going to do they're in the middle of the night, you know. More than likely, and left the hose open. Right, left the hose open. And then sealed it back up to get it here. Right. You know, we get trucks that come in here in all sorts of different states of disrepair, disassembly, and you know, it's, it's an adventure every day. You know, we were very surprised to see this. And, you know, obviously the customer uh, uh, had, had got into the project and realized that they were in over their head and that there was much bigger problems than what they could just tackle so they parked it in the, in the shed or the barn or wherever and of course animals being animals and you know who knows how long it might have been years you know uh, one of the things that we do see uh, very regularly is people with blown EGR coolers will park their truck and then that causes uh, coolant to go down into the cylinders and will eventually uh, uh, destroy the engine because it will rust the bores. You don't want to let coolant sit in the bores any more than just a day or two. I mean, it'll start to etch into those those uh, bores and, and destroy the engine. Years ago, when I put together Power Stroke Help, I envisioned Power Stroke Help as a website, as a forum, as a, a place that people could go to to uh, figure out what they were going to do. And, and what I imagined was, you know, a guy, you know, middle-aged guy, sitting at his at his computer at two in the morning, can't sleep because he's worried about this bill or this problem that he has from Ford or whoever he took the vehicle to and at, at, uh, uh, that he's you know searching Power Stroke and he eventually finds PowerStrokeHealth.com and, and makes a decision from there and, and sometimes that takes more than just a day or two. It might take months or years or, 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 or whatever until the, the vehicle actually ends up here. So you know sometimes we see little adventures you know. <laughs> Somebody, somebody made a home in this truck in, in, the, in the coolant hose, which seems like a bizarre place, but I guess if you're you know, a rat scurrying around and you feel the winter coming uh, and you walk up on top there where it's kind of, you know, the hood's up just a little bit and you get up on that little spot because we found the berries up on the top there too, didn't we? Didn't we? Yes, there yeah. was evidence of a trail there. There was a breadcrumb trail. There was a breadcrumb trail. A berry trail. A berry trail. But yeah, that's the first. I hadn't seen berries in a cooling system no, before. No, that that's, that's definitely a first. That was we a new found one. bolts and nuts and stuff you would expect yeah. to see. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, human errors. Or they, you know, forgot to set the beer down before they tightened something up, you know? I mean, that's... <laughs> I've that's, seen hoods with full of acorns, you know? Yeah, yeah, up in, yeah, the acorns in the hood, yeah. Okay. They, they get all up in there. Where that's it's, understandable. Yeah, because, you know, the mice need to do their thing. Give us a call if we can help you, 770-931-4070, PowerStrokeHelp.com. Thank you for your support to make PowerStrokeHelp.com the number one stop for the diesel enthusiast on the Internet.